Hello, this is iTunes, and this video will be a tutorial on how to use the new game hooks introduced in Content Creator Integration 1.7.0. So I'll be doing two different examples using the game hooks in this video. And I would also like to add that I am running from development environment, and I've also got uh, my IDE open in the background right here because it's going to be a lot easier to have the development environment open to be able to use the game hooks. I'll explain a little bit more about this later, but just to start off, let's open up the CCI config editor, which is, I guess that's what I call it. Uh, and let's switch over to this new tab here, it's Minecraft. So you want to open this and immediately you will see there's a listener array with no objects in it. So you just double click on this to add a new listener and it adds one new object here that it's called a listener and how this works is it listens for forge events which are events that trigger when something happens in the game and for this example the first example we'll be doing i'm going to be listening for uh, the living death event so that's an event that triggers whenever a living entity dies so over here in the ide uh, i already have it opened up and this is the name of the class, which is what we're going to be copying out. So we're going to be putting the class name into the class name field in the listener to tell the listener that we're listening for a living death event. After that, you would want to add a new assessor. So just double click on that to add a new object assessor. And what this object assessor does is it takes objects that were passed along in the event to other object assessors. The, the listener is going to do the same thing. So the first object that we're going to be receiving in this object assessor would be the event itself, which on its own doesn't really have that many fields and methods. But let's not forget that the living death event also extends living event. So you want to go up a level and we want to find out the the entity that died. From this event, you can get it from the function get living event or from the field entity living. For this uh, example, I'm going to be using get living event. So I'm just going to copy the name of the method out and just put it back into Minecraft. So the function field here, we're just going to put the name of the function in there. For fields, it's exactly the same. You just put in the name of the field. CCI detects if you have brackets in it or not to decide if it's a field or a method. So what this does is it's going to take the entity living that died in the event and pass it along to this object assessor. So this object assessor will have the entity living. And then from there, we want to find out the name of the entity. So we want to create another set of object assessors which pulls in to the name of the entity which you will find in living entity, the function called get name. So you just want to copy that out, put that in there. And then now you have a new object called the, uh, well, the new object I text component, which isn't exactly something that CCI can understand. So you got to try and dumb it down even more. So you want to go into that one. Make another new object assessor and get unformatted component text that will get you the basic name of the entity in a string format which is something that cci can understand and then you put that in there as well so you realize we've already reached the very end of what we're looking for in the event we have the string so when the object assessor calls this function it's going to get a string and we want to keep that so we just pass it on into the variables list with this field called arg name. Let's just say, for example, we put it as entity name. And from there, we have the name of the entity in our variables. So from here, you want to go back all the way up here and make, take a note. OK, I'm sorry, that's my WhatsApp. Uh, take a note. On the event field, you can make a new event here and do everything like you used to do. Just for quick example purposes, I'm just going to be using a narrator outcome. 
and I'm just going to make the message entity name just died. And that should be all that you need to do to set up a listener for a game event. So just to quickly test it out, I already have it set up with this sacrificial pig just for the purpose of this. So I'm going to kill it off. And uh, if things worked properly, you would hear the narrator say, sacrificial pig just died. Sacrificial pig just died. Sacrificial and, pig just died. And that is something you want to note. Events can happen on both sides. It can happen on the server and it can happen on the client. Again, my WhatsApp. Please try not to mind that for now. Uh, so you want to go back over to listener and you want to turn this either on to make it so that the event is only triggered on the server and then it's eventually sent back to the client. Or you will want to have a bunch of checks further down here just to see if we are triggering on the client or not. But I won't go into detail about that one. Another example that I want to make today would be, you've probably already seen the diamond ore that I have sitting right next to me. Um, just go back up here, make another new listener. And now we're going to be listening for the, the block break event. So block break events are a little bit special. They're actually set in a inner class of the block event. So here's the block event class and we have the break event class. So what you want to do with inner classes is you want to take the, the name of the main class first, put it in the class name, then take the name of the inner class, add a dollar sign just after the class of the main class, and then add the name of the inner class after this. So what you're doing is you're telling CCI you're looking for the event that is from block, uh, block event and is the inner class of, called break event. TCI doesn't accept uh, variable insertions for the class name, so you shouldn't worry about this green dollar sign here. And from there, you want to just do like what you did earlier, is add object assessors. So we know from here that we want to get the block state. And because like, I used a method in the example earlier, I'm going to show you how to use the fields instead. So I'm just going to copy out the field state. Put that in there, put another one. Go to block state. There's going to be a method in here called get block. It's an abstract block state. That, that, keep that in mind. We're going to have to reference that later. So just put this get block. Then we're going to have a block. And from there, I want to get the resource location for this block. So there will be a function called get resource. If I can find it, give me a second. Oh. Sorry, uh, get registry name. So I'm going to copy this out as well. Another one, get registry name. So this is going to accept the resource location, but CCI still doesn't understand that. So we're going to need one more that sets that calls the function to string. So that breaks down like the resource location into a string, or well, the resource location converts itself to a string, and then we want to keep that. So let's just go with block name. And then we go back to the listener, we go to the event. This time I want to check for a specific block because we're going to have all the different blocks that we're breaking. Let's have a variable condition or variable check. And we check for, um, what was it, block name. We check the variable block name and we want Minecraft diamond or so should that condition pass we have an outcome I'm going to be using narrator once again and it's just going to say diamonds so should that work perfectly fine as well when we break this diamond or you'll hear the narrator say diamonds diamonds and there you have it so that's how you like to set up game hooks in a development environment. Running game hooks in a runtime environment, which most of you will be doing, is a little bit different. And I'm just going to go back to this 
example right here. For those who are unaware, Minecraft is obfuscated in runtime and uh, Forge FML, it kind of deobfuscates the code, but it uses different names from what's set in development environment. So we will add block event earlier. This is a Minecraft Forge e class. So this class would not be obfuscated. But the next level down, block state is a Minecraft event, which means all the functions and the fields will be obfuscated. So what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to go over to maybe the Minecraft Forge Discord. I already have it open right here. And you want to go to the bot commands channel, or you can DM the Forge bot directly. And you want to look for the method get block. Well, it's not in this one, but um, there it is. You want to look for the, the search name of the method called get block. So you're going to ask the MCP bot, you're looking for the method for the, uh, the mapping for the method get block. Give it a second. And you can see here abstract block, abstract block state dot get block. So you want to copy this out. This is the name that will be used in runtime. And then go back to CCI. So instead of using get block, you want to use the name, the mapping that you just used, and just slap on the brackets after that to make sure that CCI knows it's a method. Then you want to do the same for every other method in here. Get registry name is a forge edition, so you do not need to remap that one. But that's how you're going to have to set it up for a runtime environment, which, like I said, most of you will be using. So that is the basics of how you would like to set up um, the game event hooks for CCI. As I, as I mentioned, it's introduced in 170. If you have any additional queries or you have any problems trying to get this to work, uh, I do have a CCI channel over in my Discord, which I'm just going to link in the description. Feel free to drop by, ask any questions over there. But that's going to be it. I hope you guys uh, found this video to be helpful if you're trying to use the game hook thingy my bob. And yeah, thanks for watching.